Welcome to this online booklet created by The Christian Answer. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died on a cross. The question we should be asking is, why? We need to begin our journey at the right place. And this means we do need to understand what a Christian is not before we can understand what a real Christian is. So what is a Christian? Someone may say, I was brought up in a Christian home. That doesn't make you a Christian. I believe in doing good and helping other people, another may say. That's all well and good, but that doesn't make you a Christian either. I believe in the God of the Bible. Well, many people do, but that doesn't make you a Christian either. Let's begin then at the beginning, because in the beginning, everything was very good. That is what the Bible says. It wasn't like it is today. Something tragic has happened. Man had a free choice. Adam was not like a robot, programmed only to obey. He was created to be loved by God and to love God. The tragedy is summed up in the words, All have sinned. You'll find this verse in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And we have all inherited the rebellious nature of our first parents. So what is sin? Sin is crossing a line. God says don't, but we do. God says do, but we don't. The word that explains this in the Bible is transgression. Sin is missing the mark. If the pass mark in an exam is 50, it really doesn't matter whether you only get 49 or 9. The result is the same. But you may ask, am I a sinner? Well, I sin when I do what I want, not what is right. The Bible puts it this way. We have all turned to our own way. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 says this. I also sin when I do not love God with all my heart. The Bible says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. This is found in Matthew chapter 22 verses 37 and 38. Sin is not only something we do, sin does something in our lives. The first thing is that sin spoils. It is like an ugly blot on a clean page. In the old days, people used pens where they dipped the nib into an inkwell. How often that ink blotted the page. Sin does that with our lives. It blots our lives. It spoils what we are, everything we do, and it also spoils those we influence. But sin also spreads in our lives. It is like weeds in a garden or like untreated wounds, like terrible and contagious diseases. The third thing sin does is it separates. It's like a cloud blotting out the sun. God seems far away now. But the final tragedy is that we will be separated from him as a loving father, as a good God blessing us. We will be separated from him in these ways forever. But God has a rescue plan. That is why Christ came. He came to fulfill God's promises. God said a saviour would come. When Adam first sinned, God promised to send someone who would do what is necessary to deal with our sin. The Old Testament promises and the Old Testament prophecies point to one divine saviour who had to come. God would come. He would come as a man. But Christ also came to display God's love. God said he loved us, and now he has proved just how much he sent his only son to die for us. But Christ also came to live the life we should have lived. God cannot accept us as we are. Someone must live a righteous life for us. Someone must live a perfect and sinless life, the life we should have lived. But Christ also came to die the death we deserve to die. When Jesus died on the cross, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The only answer to that question is the one the Bible gives, that he was suffering the punishment that our sins deserve. So where do I start if I am now to go forward? Well, there is something to admit. 
Do you see yourself as God sees you? Do you see yourself as sinful, unworthy, deserving of God's punishment and needing God, needing his salvation that you cannot save yourself? There is also something to believe. And by believe, I mean you must trust something. The question is, will you trust your own goodness? Will you believe that you somehow can get yourself out of the mess your life is in? Will you believe that you can do something that will make amends before God for the sin you've committed? Or will you place yourself under the protection or in the care of Jesus Christ and what he has done, dying on the cross, to be the saviour you need? There's something also to consider, and that is that when people see themselves as sinful and go to Jesus Christ as their saviour, they are setting out to follow Christ as Lord as well as saviour. They are turning to him so that he might take control of their life and mould it and shape it to what it should be. So there is something to do. The Bible uses various words to describe what we have to do. We are called to come to Christ, to believe in Christ, to receive Christ, to turn to Christ. In other places it's described as calling on the name of the Lord. It is crying out to him and saying to him, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. It is saying, Lord, I have sinned. Will you please forgive that sin? And Lord, I need you because I've been going in the wrong direction. Who will give me strength to go in the right direction? Please change my heart and take me forward into a new life as a Christian believer. So where do I go from here then? Believing in Jesus Christ is the beginning of a new life. The next step is given in the Bible. If you have a Bible, you can open it and find Acts chapter 2 verses 41 and 42. It says this, then those who received the word were baptized and they were added to the church and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayers. This describes what happened just after Jesus Christ had gone back to heaven and when people heard the preaching and teaching of this good message about salvation. Firstly, they were baptized and this said, I've finished my old way of life. I've been washed from sin. The old me is dead. A new me has been raised from the dead and is going to live a new life. Those people were added to the church. And in fact, they were added to the number of the believers who were there. They joined their church. But they then were committed to learning from the Bible, the apostles' teaching. They had fellowship together and friendship together. They took communion. They remembered that Jesus Christ had died for them, that his body was broken and his blood was shed for them, and they prayed together. You see, their Christianity was not just a private thing. They joined a local church, and they, together with the other believers, sought to grow in grace, to worship God, and to tell others as well about their salvation. Now, if you would like any further help in discussing these things or to find a local church near you, you can do so by contacting thechristianswer at gmail.com. But now you understand why Jesus died, what will you do? Will you choose to change direction and trust and follow him? Thank you.